Hi, the Stinny Finger is here, it's a Raspberry Pi 3. It has just one gigabyte of RAM and yet we can turn it into a functional AI server. Sounds crazy, right? But in this video, I will show you exactly how to do it step by step. We will install on AI models, test it and see how well it performs. And the best part, you can do this yourself on almost any Raspberry Pi. Stay with me and you will learn how to turn a Raspberry Pi into a working AI server. Compare different AI models and see just how much power you can squeeze out of this teeny board. Let's get started. Okay, as I mentioned in the beginning, I have Raspberry Pi 3 with quad core 1.2 GHz and just 1 GB of RAM. Okay, the first step is installing the operation system. The good news? It's super easy, because you can install Raspberry Pi OS using Raspberry Pi Imager. You can download Imager for Windows, Mac OS or Ubuntu. After installing Raspberry Pi Imager, you should see something like this. Makes it easier because it limits the choice of operating system to only the one that fits to the selected Raspberry Pi model. So I choose my Raspberry Pi 3. Now I can choose operating system. We have many operating systems depending on what we want to do. You can easily turn your Raspberry into an emulator of old games or assistant for your smart home. But I choose Raspberry Pi OS Little with no desktop environment, just with command line. And I choose my SD card. Next. And this is good time for edit your settings. You can for example set hostname, change the username and password, and also configure Wi-Fi, or set local settings. I want enable SSH, and I use just password authentication, but if you want something more secure, you should choose public key authentication only. Okay, yes. Yes. Okay, this may take some time, so I will speed up the recording. Once it's done, you can remove the card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. I connected only the monitor and power cable. You should see a green LED on the Raspberry and on the screen you should see something like this. The IP address should appear on the screen. You can also check the router to see if a new device has appeared on your network. Now when you know IP address of your Raspberry Pi, you can connect using SSH. Yes. Now enter your password. And now we can go to Olamacom, download Linux, copy, it's all bad, and if you have problem with installation, you can go to manual install instructions, and here you have more details. Let's go back to our Raspberry Pi, paste, and there. All right, this will take a moment. So, perfect time for a coffee break. Okay, install complete. As you can see, no NVIDIA or AMD GPU detected. So, Olama will run in CPU only mode. Clear. And now we can go to Olama.com and choose our first model. Let's choose something small, for example, Gwen 2.5. And the smallest is 0.5b. Copy. Paste. And another coffee break. This also can take some time. So I will speed up the recording. Okay, success. Let's ask, for example, what is AI? Okay, it works. This is a real-time response, 
not that bad. Of course, it's not a speed demon, but remember that we only have one gigabyte of RAM. So maybe now we'll do a test and check exactly how fast our AI server is. Okay, I will speed up this and close. Okay, so see for example information about response time. You just run Olama as usual and add verbose at the end. Okay, let's ask for example, what do you want for Christmas? Okay, this is also a regal time response. Let's wait a moment and at the end, we should have statistic about this query. If you want to learn more about Olama, you can find a video on my YouTube channel where I talk more about this topic. If you are interested in generating images using local AI server, I encourage you to familiarize yourself with, for example, stable diffusion. You can also find a separate episode about this on my channel. Stable Diffusion is a powerful AI model for generating images. It allows you to create realistic and artistic visuals without relying on the cloud. You have full control, your images stay on your device. No limitations because you can generate wherever you want without waiting in queues. Cost effective because there is no API fees or subscriptions. For smooth performance a dedicated GPU is highly recommended and naturally Better hardware means faster and more efficient generation. Still, I managed to get stable diffusion working even on my old laptop. If you want to know more, as I mentioned before, check out my video on YouTube. Now maybe we'll run another model, ask the same question and also check the response time to be able to compare something. Let's go back to Olamacom and choose another model. Maybe teeny llama. Let's see if we can run it. Or I'm run teeny llama verbose. Okay, I was disconnected, so let's reconnect again. All right, and one more time. Olama run teeny llama verbose. Okay, I will speed up the recording. Okay, finish. Success, but model requires more system memory than is available. So, as you can see, teeny llama is too big to run on Raspberry with only one gigabyte of RAM. So let's choose maybe something else. Maybe this one. Copy. Paste. Verbose. Okay, I will speed up the recording. Okay, let's connect again. Oh yeah, let's ask for example, what do you want for Christmas? Okay, let's wait a moment. I don't want to speed this up. So you can see what the normal response speed of the AI server is on Raspberry Pi 3 with just one gigabyte of RAM. As you probably noticed, we're using a different model and this time we got a slightly different response. At the end, we should also see statistics. For the record, running a local AI server is a great option if you want to full control over your data and avoid cloud costs. For me, the most important things are the ability to run everything locally and keeping things lightweight. I wanted to see if I could get this working on my old Raspberry Pi with just one gigabyte of RAM and honestly I was positively surprised. I expected way more issues and much slower response times. But it actually works better than I thought. 
it's also a great way to learn about AI and it's a fun challenge to see how much you can squeeze out of such small device. Statistic for the same query, but for the previous model. As you can see, there is no much difference here. The smallest model is usually a bit faster, which is visible here. But it also has fewer possibilities. And here for the comparison, I used also the same query on the same model, but on the laptop with 16 GB of RAM. The same laptop I used in the previous video. As you can see, this time I don't need to speed up the recording. Pooling manifest is very fast and also response is very fast. Okay, this is also a real time response. Let's wait a moment and at the end we should have statistic about the square. And there you have it, an AI server running on a just Raspberry Pi 3. Of course, it's not as powerful as dedicated AI machine, but it works. If you have a newer Raspberry Pi, you will get even better results. You can also use this for other projects like a retro gaming console, smart home assistant or even a personal cloud server. If you found this useful, give this video a like, subscribe and don't miss new episode. Let me know in the comment what else you would like to see running on Raspberry Pi 3. So thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.